Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be blasting Swans, Greed, and Holy Money. And I just wanted to make a whole video based on Swans. And this is off a dub I made myself. It has Uncle Charlie on the cover. But... Wow. Like, some of the gnarliest music from the 1980s when it comes to just extreme music, period, and one of the most influential in extreme metal, especially in the UK back then. And you might be like, what are you, what? What are you talking about? Like, how did this influence anything? Go listen to Napalm Death's second record, especially. The intro is pretty much a swan song from the extreme error of swans. Because there are different errors of this band. But to me, this is some of my favorite material. Greed, holy money, public castration is a good idea, live screw. Like, I love that stuff. And like, you know, like Young God and Cop, great shit. But I just wanted to go over today, Greed and Holy Money. And just because they're so good. It just never gets old. As many times as I've listened to like these songs and stuff, they still are just as oppressive as can possibly be swans and like what michael especially created and creates because swans is still one of the loudest live bands in existence although they might not be playing you know this type of music anymore <laughs> When it comes to swans, there's so much I can talk about. Like, we could be here for legit hours. But I wanted to make this legit as short and to the point as possible because swans are not for everyone, obviously. If you're a fan of oppressive music, stuff that's very, like... It all, it really depends on what era of the band you want to listen to. Like, if you're a fan of early Nine Inch Nails, like, for real. there's a lot of bands out there that claim to be oppressive and whatnot. No one, in my opinion, has ever, ever came as close to Swans, aside from probably legitimately the second Napalm Death record, uh, Evolved as One, I think is the track. It's the, it's the opening track. Or it might be weak fire. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the title of it. It's a man's world, 
maybe I, I forget it, but it's total swans worship and it's just done so well but like i don't know if trent reznor was influenced by swans but i feel like he had to have been when he made pretty hate machine there's just way too many it would be coincidental if Trent Reznor never heard Swans before. I, I highly doubt that. But you never know. But I really love this compilation. It was a double CD. And it had Forever and Cop on one disc. And Greed and Holy Money on another. And if you've ever seen... I, I no longer have that in my possession. But... If you've ever seen, you know, we're, we're listening to a dub I made, but if you ever saw the original artwork and stuff, as minimal as it is, it sticks to a theme, and you can kind of view it, it's one of those things where it's art, it's like the Black Flag logo, like, what does that mean to you? Like, I mean... I think Greg himself said that means anarchy, like, but like, you know, it's, it's really whatever you personally want it to be. Like the Crimson Ghost. I mean, obviously I know where it originally comes from, but like, if you're going to put the Crimson Ghost on something, to me, you're putting the Misfits on something. Same goes for, like, the Danzig skull. You're not putting that comic book on anything. You're putting the Dan you're putting Danzig on it. But at the same time, those early Swans records, just the layout, it's so simplistic, yet it's loud. And what I mean by loud is, like, it just kind of... It makes you look at it, especially a cover like, uh, like cop, like the cover art to cop and stuff. And like, it's just, you know, it's kind of crazy. Like just, it, I love it. But to me, if you go back and you look at like those early Swans records and their cover art, you know, to me, it's one of the mo the more underappreciated cover art when it comes to extreme metal records, if you want to call this metal, from the 80s. Because to me, Swans are very avant-garde, but at the same time, definitely one of the heaviest bands of all time. And not heavy in the traditional sense of like death metal. Heavy in an actual, like, holy shit, that, I don't know how this is so crushing. And, like, just imagine, like, you know, most normal people were, like, you know, listening to, like, you spin me right round, baby, right round. And, like, imagine if you come home from work, hard-ass day, and, you know, your 14-year-old kid is blasting swans you're in trouble russian Terminator like workshop. I think this has two drummers, I'm not positive. That might be alive.
safe, people. This comes from a genre that became known as No Wave. I don't really like that term, but I understand it completely. But to me, swans are swans. And even their newer music, like, it's really, really good. If you like, you know, stuff that's experimental, if you're a fan of, like, bands on, like, Neuro like Neurosis' record label and stuff, like, you gotta get into this. If for some reason Swans went under your radar, again, this is not for everyone. Like, this is just for, like, if you really, you know, really like extreme music, this is as probably extreme as it gets. And it's from the 80s. And the band's closest today, I feel, to capturing, like, what Swans did is, like, the body, um, Author and Punisher kind of have, at times, that, like, oppressive feel. Pig Heart Transplant. But, like, Napalm Death still are even more now than ever, I'd say. Like, the last record straight up had a song where I was like, wow. I think it's the opening, actually, to Apex Predator Easy Meat. It straight up sounds like swans. It's like, oh, oh, oh. like just the way like Barney's vocals are. It sounds like Michael in the early swans days. So pretty much, if you got rid of swans, you might not have Napalm Death, which in term, turn, you wouldn't have Godflesh, because Godflesh was ev it's ob if you it's obvious. Godflesh is influenced by this. I mean, again. But I could I could have just told you folks like yeah we're gonna be going over some Godflesh today and just played. Swans, Greed and Holy Money, and on the A side, we have Cop and Young God. And these recordings, to me, are some of Swans' best material. I thought this had filth on it also, so my mistake, but we're going over Greed and Holy Money today, because that's what I wanted to talk about, because that's what I was listening to last night. And uh, it just, like, reminded me how gnarly this really is, like, because, you know, for a really, really long time, I've been a Swans fan, probably since around, I would say, 2002, probably the first time I actually heard Swans, and I can almost guarantee you back then, I probably didn't like it. I was really into, like, hardcore and stuff, and probably one of the last things I wanted to listen to was Swans. But I remember, like, hearing it, and it was through the live video. Somebody had a copy of, a uh, uh, Live Screw. I think it's Live Screw or Long Screw. It's one or the other. But uh, I just remember being like, you know, this was an individual, he, they were older than me, so like they were a little more, you know, versed in that style of music and stuff. And at the time, like just a lot of shit in the 80s that I didn't know even existed. And this whole no wave thing, I just remember being kind of like, because they were obsessed with Godflesh. Like, my one friend, like, I just remember, like, he was obsessed. Like, that was his favorite, like, band ever, was, like, Godflesh. And, again, like, I remember the first time I heard it, it immediately, I was like, I was like, whoa, like, this is different. But Godflesh is a little bit more 
you know, open armed. Like, yeah, it's oppressive as hell, don't get me wrong. But, like, compared to swans, where it's pretty much like a giant, get away from me, I hate you. Like, for real, I'm not playing, leave me alone. That's what it sounds like. Where Godflesh is kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll smoke with you, but, like, I don't think I like you. It's kind of like that, but, like, you know... It's music that really is gut wrenching at the end of the day. Like, it's not just overwhelmingly heavy for the sake of it. It's overwhelmingly heavy subject matter underneath all that feedback and, you know, riffing and whatnot. And with Godflesh, the original drum kit from hell. And I love the way it sounds. Like, especially that live recording I took out. I know I take this out a lot, and there's reason for that. To me, these Godflesh songs, Tiny Tears, Wound, Not Wound, again, that's a little nod to Swans, like, with the parentheses and stuff. Like, I I do it, but I do it because of Demi Lich, but also Swans. Like, I remember just seeing that and being like, oh, like, that's cool. You can kind of two song titles. But, um, Pulp and The Mighty Like Rats, recorded 1989. And yeah, Carcass on the A side. Now, I'm sorry, but Earache Records, you are extremely greedy. Why would you split up? One of the best splits ever. Yeah, you have to buy these LPs separately now to enjoy this monstrosity. It's early Napalm Death nerdy historical stuff. But when it comes to Swans, highly, highly, highly recommend just checking them out. I felt that you folks would enjoy greed and holy money a little bit more than anything else. But then I was thinking like, Public castration is a good idea. It's kind of like my go-to Swans release. Although, you know, just just check it out. That's all I could say is go into it with an open mind. Maximum volume yields maximum results and enjoy the crushing. Total just... It's like getting... Hit in the face with a slab of sonic concrete. That is swans. And when it comes to greed and holy money. Just. I wish I had legit, you know, a cassette copy or a vinyl copy. Just because it would legit be the heaviest record in my collection. Listen to swans and... Hopefully, you enjoy it as much as I do. As always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hails. Yeah.